Hey guys, so we are getting ready to head off to MechaCon. It is 537. Registration started at 5. We have a full car. So I'm going to introduce you guys to the cast of this year's MechaCon recap. There is me. Hi, I'm Becca. I'm one of the co-founders of uh, how to be a con artist at tumblr.com one of the big convention resources this here is my mom she's going to be helping <laughs> she's gonna be helping me at the table and then back there is my younger brother Devin and he's volunteering this year so he's gonna be one of the volunteers at MechaCon we have a car full of con stuff clothes and food so this should be a very exciting eventful year but hopefully it is exciting and eventful in all the best ways so MechaCon has switched hotels. It switched last year from the Hilton to the Hyatt, and I have never actually been to the Hyatt Regency here in New Orleans. So this is a whole new hotel for me. It's gonna be an adventure. It seems like a much bigger hotel with three parking garages, one of which is a valet parking garage, and that costs $40 a day. The information they sent out did not mention anything about how much it's going to cost to non-valet park. You would think if you're staying on on the premises they would comp that but being New Orleans that is often not the case however I will inquire about a reduced rate um, we are going to be there for three nights Phone tonight connected <laughs> tonight Friday night and Saturday and we're checking out of our hotel room on Sunday morning my aunt who has some disabilities is coming with us so that may throw a wrench in the works but I know many of you guys who are watching this are either have disabilities yourself or a family member who comes to shows with you who also has disabilities so some of the information I may be able to share with you guys may be interesting and relevant to you and good to know it's always good to know what sort of accommodations you can request um let's see what else uh, I have been pre-warned that the Artist Alley in the new location is very dark, so I went to Dollar Tree, one of my favorite places for con stuff, and I picked up a bunch of lights, so that's going to be something fun, something interesting, and hopefully having a well-lit table will be to my benefit. And the alley this year is huge. I'm going to share a map with you guys so you guys know kind of what it looks like. But you can head on over to the MechaCon website to check out the map for yourself. So I look forward to sharing this weekend with you guys and I hope I am able to provide a helpful recap to help you decide whether or not MechaCon is a con for you. Thank all right, so this Hyatt is huge, and they have pre-registration, nice and set up down here, and then they have a separate area for artists to pick up their artist alley badges, so I like this. Big improvement over some of the prior years, and they seem to be moving really quickly. They've got their stuff together so far, so I'm really feeling good about this year. What? Devin's door, open door, close buttons are there. Don't touch no. them, it won't make any difference. No, okay, it's always. What? Really? Hold on. Okay, apparently we're going down. Floor two. Oh, okay. I we're going to pick up somebody else. Heading to floor 16. Doors open. Yes, it's still going to go to 16. Doors closing. What's the number, Beth? 1610 and 1626 is up here. And here's 1611. Oh, gosh. Sorry, Becca. All right, so we are staying in one of the hotel rooms attached to the Hilton. So this is the Con Hotel, and it's a nice hotel. Mm -hmm. This hotel is huge and somewhat complicated, so we just wanted to head to the room first and scope it out before check out the lovely view of the parking floor and of the city as well actually that's really pretty so gonna go set up that is really a nice it's a nice really nice view, view. Ooh, it makes me a little motion sick being in here 
this thing. So we're on 10? Yeah, 10. They really decked this hotel out for MechaCon as well. Like, they're really trying to up their game here. Which is nice, because when they were in the Hilton, this is just a big improvement. At least in terms of, like, a convention experience over the Hilton. Alright, this is the Colonial Bazaar on Thursday setup. So now I have to find Island 205. As you guys can see, it's kind of dark in here. And the ceiling's fairly low. Setup. I'm gonna pick a lot of these things up and put them back out tomorrow morning, but I kind of wanted to figure out my placement. So what's interesting about these tables is it's actually two banquet tables, so two six-foot banquet tables, which makes for a nice deep table. And you can tell because I can get two grids side by side with like about six inches or so of extra table, when normally the two grids, the second grid would be hanging off the table. So this makes for a really nice deep table. The only problem I can really see is me reaching over to help people with things, but um, better a deep table than a narrow table, right? So I'm going to pick these things up and I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Okay, so we are all set up. So far my only qualm is those big pillars you guys see. They really do a lot to obstruct the view of the alley. I'm kind of hoping that's not going to be a problem since this is the second year in this particular alley. Um, I'm kind of hoping that customers understand that. Ooh, I like the wooden setup a lot. But I'm seeing a lot of really cool creative setups and solutions for display. So I'm hoping this is going to be a good year you guys. Neto Soup here. I'm here at MechaCon Friday morning. The alley has just opened and there's already a bit of a crowd, which is nice. The alley this year seems to have a lot of really strong artists in it, a lot of really cool stuff. So if you're in the New Orleans area, I highly recommend you get down here and you come check it out, especially if you like original, unique art with an anime and manga aesthetic. This is definitely your jam. There's other comic artists here, there's other comic creators here. So if you're into comics, I highly recommend you check that out too. It's way cheaper than going to one of those crummy Wizard World shows. But let me show you guys my table. I'm actually really pleased with how the setup turned out this year. It's two banquet tables side by side, which means I get a deeper table. So I actually have lots of room to have cute things. As you guys know, I'm a kid lit artist and illustrator, so I try to keep it friendly, try to keep it cute. So I have my original watercolor comic here and you can either flip through volume one or you can flip through the original pages. I have adorable ribbons and mini comics as well as quite affordable original art pieces so alcohol marker on chiogami paper. I also am taking commissions this weekend so if you'd like to take a piece of original art home with you this weekend you need to come by early because my list tends to fill up fast but if you're looking for something a little more detailed and in color you can come by anytime these will be filled after the show I've also got beautiful laser cut wooden charms gorgeous hand painted wooden charms stickers mini prints and more so I am here at MechaCon. I'm going to be here all weekend here at this table 205. We're at kind of the back of the artist alley near the vendor section. So um, head on over to the last island if you want to check my, me out. I am surrounded by fantastic artists, so it's a good spot to be in. And I hope to see you guys this weekend. And if you guys are interested, please keep an eye out for my full con recap, which will be coming up after MechaCon has ended, and will be shared how to be a con artist. Okay.
Okay, this is the end of the row that Becca's table is on. As you can see, there's kind of an open area here. But what I want you to see is this row right here. It's got a pillar in it. But as you can see, there's plenty of space on either side of the pillars and if you go to the next row with pillars okay there's space on either side of the pillars Another wide row with pillars. Notice the space on either side. And another wide row with plenty of space on this side, with little space on this side. This is the end, the very back. Big space, no pillars, the tables are around the pillars. So going down to the end, to the end of this row, it's more like the fan tables. Okay, and then coming around the back, some more fan tables, but now you can see the back of the rows. Okay, more fan tables. Back of the rows. Notice the space between the pillars and the tables. This is that row that Becca's on. Again, very tight. <laughs> okay. Hey guys. So it is Friday evening. It is about 4.47. The alley officially, I mean 7.47. The alley officially closes at 9, but I think I'm going to pack up and head out at 8. It's been a long day. I got down here at like 9.30, 10, which isn't the worst, but been here all day. Um, the snacks we brought with us did a good job of entertaining us and carrying us through. And um, you guys can check out that vlog if you're interested in easy con snacks that don't make a huge mess. And I'm going to fill you guys in on how today went in a little while. Hey guys, it is Friday evening. I have just finished doing the show. It ended at 9, but I was packed up to leave by 8. It was a long day. It was a tiring day, but sales were very stagnant. I know that Fridays at most shows are the slow day. Um, this felt slower than a lot of Fridays, than most Fridays, in fact. For me, Fridays are usually my one of my two busy days because since I do commissions, most people know that if they want a commission done at the show, they need to come Friday or early on Saturday. I do think my placement was a contributing factor, but I did ask other artists in several of the parts of the alley, and by other artists, I mean artists I'm familiar with or friendly with, how their days were going, and a lot of other artists said it was slower than normal or it was very slow. So, um... It just seems a little bit slow this year in the alley. I'm not entirely sure why. Um, could be an off year. I know MTAC for me this year was also sort of slow. So that could be it. But my library cons have been going really well. So who knows? Maybe I'm just not selling what they're interested in buying, which is also a legitimate possibility. 
Um, I was in one of the two narrowest rows in the alley and there were these massive pillars that often occluded view. And then at the front of my aisle, people like to congregate and just talk. So that would block off, block off like a whole aisle of the artist alley. So it seems like MechaCon's artist alley has a flow problem this year and hopefully in the future they can fix it. However, I got to meet their con liaison who goes by Lie's mom and she seems awesome. She seems super nice super passionate about helping MechaCon grow, helping their artist alley grow, and she seemed very receptive to suggestions. So I have full faith that the MechaCon artist alley can continue to grow. One of the problems I do think the MechaCon artist alley is facing is that the alley itself is just too big for the convention, too big for the audience's pockets. Um, I have suggested various things to MechaCon about MechaCon in the past. Um, I've suggested they try going a juried route or a 50% juried route or um, like a 50-50 fan art thing like AWA used to do, any of those sort of limiting factors. And they were very adamant that they wanted the alley to be open to almost anybody who wanted to sell um, their wares. And while I really respect that, um, it definitely seems like we could definitely use more crafters, more soap makers, more plush makers, more hat makers. Now, one of the reasons you're also seeing fewer of those is the profit margins on handmade items like that are much lower than the profit margins on things like prints. Prints, as compared to plushies, have a crazy high profit margin. It often costs $2 to get a print printed, if not less, and you can sell prints for $15 and up. So I do understand why a lot of artists have moved away from the handmade items, but having an alley that is full of prints gets kind of boring and gets kind of samey. I was seeing a lot of Eda bags and I saw a lot of people selling things for Eda bags, specifically clear fandom charms. So um, MechaCon in a lot of ways is kind of reminding me of AX from a couple of years ago. So um, sales were sub 50, which is disappointing for any of a sh any larger anime con. Um, excuse me. I'm gonna put him in here. Oh, uh, sorry. Brain, my brain is, is fried. Um, sub 50, like I said, hopefully tomorrow's gonna be better. I do have my doubts though, given the placement. Um, other aisles did see a little bit more business, but no one was selling like gangbusters. So it seems like MechaCon is in another sort of growth phase. So hopefully tomorrow will be better and I'll let you guys know then. Well, yeah, you can't really see the table anyway. Pull them back up and then come forward. Go ahead. Hey guys, good morning. It is day two at MechaCon, so it is Saturday morning, and already we have a bit more of a crowd walking around. It is 10, 12, so the alley opened 12 minutes ago. I just finished getting set up. And not only do I have my art just on display. But I'm ever so fortunate to have some bonus art up too. So um, I hope today goes well. If you are in the New Orleans area, I hope to see you guys sometime today. Um, MechaCon is at the Hyatt Regis Regency this year, and I believe a weekend pass is $65 if you buy it at the door. So if you've got a family of kids who enjoy anime or manga or any kind of geekery, this might be a great event for you guys. Make sure you make it a point to check out the Artist Alley. We're on floor two, I believe. Right, floor two? Or are we really on floor one? Oh, we're on floor one. We're like in the basement. So I will hopefully see you guys later. Hey guys, it is the end of day two of MechaCon. My sales were better than yesterday, although not as good as I would have liked, not as good as I'm used to. Um, sorry about that, my brother is trying to call me. So not as good as I would like, not as good as I'm used to. Um, 
while the Hyatt is a beautiful hotel, it is an expensive hotel. It is like 200 a night, and um, that's not even talking about parking yet. I have no idea how bad the parking's gonna be. And the food in the hotel is also very expensive. We brought our own food for breakfast and for lunch, so that is saving some money. But dinner last night, and everyone was trying to eat as cheap as possible. Dinner last night was 77 bucks. So this has become an extremely expensive show to table at and uh, MechaCon definitely has some artist alley issues regarding layout and lighting that and congestion and traffic flow that need to be solved before I could recommend this show. So tomorrow is Sunday. Um, at the door passes for Friday and Saturday, I believe are 40 each for one day passes, 65 for the weekend. Um, tomorrow is the only day where it is $15, so I'm kind of thinking we're going to see a lot of families who could not otherwise justify the expense tomorrow. So, fingers crossed. Regarding the art I showed you guys earlier in the video, that was kind of unavoidable. That is the girl behind me. That is her art. And, um, as you guys can probably tell, as a kidlit artist who draws very family-friendly, very family-appropriate stuff, it is a bit of a conflict of interest. And um, I did talk to her about it, and the response was extremely negative. Sure, she was not very, very offensive. She was not very receptive to my request that she switch it out for something that is all ages appropriate. So that it has been a learning experience in many ways for me this year, and I don't know if I can justify doing MechaCon again in the future. However, tomorrow may prove differently, so I'll see you guys then. Hey guys, good morning. It is Sunday morning, the final morning of MechaCon. We are all set up and ready for sales. I hope you guys are looking forward to my upcoming full con recap. I gave you a little bit of taste of how my weekend went on Friday, and I've got more to come for you guys. So, I'll see you guys later. Hey guys, so I just got back from MechaCon. I think I sold around 500, which is not particularly good for me. It sounded like literally every artist I talked to who I'm on good enough terms with that we would be honest with one another said it was a down MechaCon for everyone except for one table and they said they did okay. Um, so it was a down MechaCon. Every artist I know who has done MechaCons when it was at the Hilton so this was really, really down. Uh, last year it was down, but that was a transition year as a transition from the Hilton to the Hyatt. So this is the second year it's in the Hyatt. The Hyatt is a beautiful hotel. It really suits MechaCon. It honestly looks like a space station. And the New Orleans Tourist uh, Bureau, I believe, put up these flags outside for MechaCon, which is really cool. And then the hotel itself had all these flags and things for MechaCon, so it looked really cool, but it was very difficult to navigate. There were some problems with the elevators in that there just weren't enough elevators, and the elevators had weight problems and capacity problems on Saturday night and Sunday at check-in. The artist alley never really got enough foot traffic, and the foot traffic it did get... The flow was very stifled by the placement of the pillars and the layout of the alley. Um, I know next year they're hoping to uh, sort of switch the layout a bit to um, better accommodate for the pillars and the lighting. So maybe next year it won't be a problem. But to be honest, sales were so down this year and it just felt like such a struggle that I don't necessarily want to go back to MechaCon, which is a shame because... I had done MechaCon since 2010 as an artist, and I was at the first MechaCon as a cosplayer way back in like 2000, earlier than 2005. Um, I was at the first MechaCon when it was in Lafayette, and New Moreno Con was still in New Orleans. And I was at the MechaCon that um, we basically had evacuated from Lafayette straight to Orange, Texas because Hurricane Katrina was about to hit New Orleans. So I've done MechaCon for a really long time. Last year I was super bummed out that I didn't make it. Like it really kind of broke my heart and I took it personally. 
Um, I had applied to be on the wait list and I never heard back and I, I wrote several times to ask and never heard back from them last year. This year they have the three tiered application process and I jumped on it immediately. Like I was in San Fran, San Jose for APE and I, <laughs> I left APE to go find internet so I could apply for, and pay for MechaCon. So I was really excited for MechaCon this year. I was excited to see my old friends. I was excited to see my family. And to be honest, Destrahan Comic Con, which was like a four hour show, was better for me in terms of people, in terms of getting to meet people, and in terms of like sales per hour than MechaCon. So I don't know that I will be doing it in the future. Um, and honestly, it kind of feels like maybe I am phasing out of anime cons or anime cons are phasing out of me. My bread and butter at most shows is commissions and commissions were down at MTAC and commissions were almost non-existent at MechaCon. And that was just really weird because like for years I've been slammed with commissions. I can't keep up with, the, with demand and I am charging more. I'm charging 15 for a detailed pencil chibi sketch, 15 for detailed pen, uh, detailed chibi inks, but uh, 5 plus for additional characters and 10 plus for additional characters, so my prices are higher than they have been in the past, but it's not like that isn't in keeping with the quality. So um, I'm not really sure what's going on. I know people still enjoy having their OCs drawn. I know people still enjoy having their ships drawn. I know people still enjoy having me draw weird, funny things like Rick and Cronus hanging out. I really enjoyed that commission, actually. Um, so, like, I know people still have that desire, but maybe the economy is just in a place where people can't justify doing that. But then that's really weird because people were spending a lot of money in the dealer's room. That's another thing. The dealer's room didn't have any of the layout problems. Like, they didn't have as many pillars, and they had better lighting, and they just seemed to have, like, a better layout structure than the artist alley. So... They had us in the basement, a lot of reception problems, everybody's phone batteries were dying, people couldn't run credit card transactions because they couldn't get enough internet. Um, they didn't have any sort of sectioning based on content, so you had people who were selling um, nude drawings or um, suggestive drawings next to people selling all ages stuff, next to people selling kid lit stuff. So that is something I would definitely like to see in the future is they either put the adults in an adult only section like I know other cons do or they enforce censoring or they enforce checking IDs because that's something other shows do enforce is that you have to check for IDs if you're selling 18 plus material and there are artists there who are definitely selling provocative 18 plus material who are not checking for IDs and I, there might have been some who were but the ones that I was within earshot of were absolutely not checking IDs. Never heard it come up once. Um, I know also at AX, if you're selling adult material, you have to censor it. And uh, at MechaCon, it was not necessarily uniformly enforced. And also, artists were allowed to display stuff on the back of their display, thus um, competing with the artists in front of them, their display space, and the display area were tight. Like, the area behind the table was really tight, so most people could not have a behind-the-table display, or rather, many artists opted not to have a behind-the-table display. There were a few who did, and that caused a lot of foot traffic problems within the, like, artist alley behind-the-table area. So, the behind-the-table area is incredibly tight. I would be surprised if you could get more than three people behind a table. We we couldn't. Not that we really tried because I didn't want to inconvenience my neighbors, but we, we would not have been able to if we had wanted to. Um, they also don't necessarily have a plan of action for disabled patrons, disabled members. Um, that could be something they work on in the future as um, a lot of attendees do, deal, do have disabilities or a lot of attendee family members have disabilities. It would be really nice if they had like a parent zone or a quiet zone. I know some cons do that. I think um, Comic Con or Hamacon had a parent zone where they just had like armchairs and the lights were a little lower and it was just a quiet area to de-stress. So that could definitely be something that MechaCon could adopt in the future, especially since many attendees have things like ADHD or autism or cerebral palsy, um, things that when you're overstimulated, you tend to go into kind of lockdown mode. So it'd be nice to see that. Um, the hotel, the Hyatt, while nice, was very expensive. And they also take a $50 deposit per night. And then they also charge like a, 
they charge the first night's stay uh, like months ahead of time and then they charge that plus all your nights together again in theory you're going to be refunded some of that we will find out because i haven't been refunded yet but like oh and we paid 70 for um thursday friday saturday and half of sunday parking no thursday evening friday saturday sunday so like four day parking or maybe three full day parking so that's a little steep basically it all adds up quickly because there is nothing you can eat in that hotel that is cheap we brought our own food and i kind of have a vlog in progress on how that went um definitely was way better than buying con food save some money um but it also means you have to bring an ice chest and you need to have a fridge in the room that works and a lot of people were complaining that the in-room fridges were not really fridges they were just coolers so all of these are things for you to consider if you're thinking about tabling at MeccaCon. I flew in, but and I stayed in the Hyatt Hotel, so there's no way that I recoup my costs. I think I made maybe a little over 500, maybe not, and that's really bad for me for a travel show. So basically, the cost of tabling at the show, staying at the on-site hotel, which helps make the con affordable to the convention organizers when they fill the con blocks, parking in the parking garage, paying to eat out every night, the cost of getting my merchandise made, um, flying in my merchandise, buying plane tickets, then the, in, just like I did not have necessarily, some of my neighbor, neighbors were ex wonderful, wonderful people and I would love to table next to them again. Um, so I made some new friends, but some of my neighbors were really not good neighbors at all and they were selling adult material and I was selling kid lit material and that's always a bad mix and I think anytime you have those two very different demographics next to each other you're gonna have a big problem and um, I have tabled next to people selling adult materials and in the past they've been really nice people really nice neighbors who are very quick to self-censor their work at this show that was not the case and I think I think my concerns were very much misconstrued and then misrepresented to a group, a huge body of people. So I don't really appreciate them doing that. But um, that's going, that's in the past now. Um, in the future, if I um, see, and the thing is like, I was set up on Thursday, they were set up Friday morning. If I'd realized that I was gonna be next to people selling adult material who had a problem with self-censoring and not having their adult material, visible in my display um then i would have asked to be moved and just moved like it would have been a huge pain in the butt and i really liked my setup but i would have rather moved than have dealt with the drama that i got to sit through that i was subjected to this weekend and i will go out on a limb and say it was incredibly unprofessional behavior and the convention community is a very small community and um those of us who have been around long enough people know who we are so like just don't make enemies of people try to tr be an adult try to treat people around you like adults um if somebody voices a concern at least try to hear them out and see where they're coming from because if they have to get staff it's because they're if they they feel like this confrontation is going to get really ugly and it's not worth fighting at a con over so like if you're a young con artist and um um, a veteran con artist has some concerns about your display overlapping onto theirs maybe just hear them out try to see it from their point of view and try to work out a compromise that you both can live with so things don't have to get ugly um this con was way too hard way too cold in terms of temperature and way too long to be in dealing with such ridiculous drama um and i think everyone was probably tired and a little short-tempered and a little miserable but like I said every almost everyone I talked to had lower sales the aisle behind me it sounded like they were having a really hard time too my aisle was having a terrible like almost everyone in my aisle was having a really really hard time because we had this giant pillar that basically bookended two parts of the alley that no one was getting to so I can personally speak to that being a bad situation and tempers were were kind of high. So this was the certainly the most stressful show I've done in a while, the least rewarding show I've done in a while, 
and while I appreciate what staff is trying to do, it's just it's, it's been a bad transition. It's a little too late. So I unfortunately do not recommend MechaCon anymore. I used to really love the New Orleans audience, but you know there's ways that I can sell my work to that same audience without dealing with some of the drama and some of the frustrations that I think everyone in the alley was dealing with. There are other ways I can sell my stuff and sell my original comics and draw commissions for people without having to deal with that. And I'm just going to explore those avenues in the future uh, because you can't rely on conventions to have your back. You have to have your own when you're a convention artist. So thank you guys so much for watching my recap. My patrons get the full, full recap. So if you're interested in hearing the full story, you should consider becoming a patron. Thank you guys so much for your support and your encouragement. I hope this con recap was helpful, useful, and informative for you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching.